we all saw the War of Arrows movie. And I'm curious if the spinning thing with the thumb is real, if the arrow will really fly behind a corner, and if it's even possible with our weaker bows we use nowadays. This time I would definitely use my thumb ring, which is pretty big and bulky, but I don't have another one. Also, I need to use a different bow and different string. Usually I like to shoot a Turkish bow, but I have this special setup. I'll show you how it works. Oh, there's an arrow. I knock like this and I move down. Yes, I made this movement like and down. But with the thumb ring, it's not comfortable because when I want to switch the thumb, it goes like this, yeah, we see it's not working. So I need to have plain string with only knocking point for my Assyrian bow, which I fortunately have. Where it is, ah, it's here, just with the knocking point. That's exactly what we need. I take my Assyrian arrows and we are going out. Another new thing I use is tape that I usually use only for strings. So I use it now for my left hand for the place where the arrow goes through the hand because sometimes it's pretty messy and it hits my hand. But when I used the glove, there was the problem that it was a little too much of material and my aiming went haywire meant too many times. So that's why I switched to this tape and I'm testing it now so we will see if it's work better for me. The ring, we all know, works like this. It covers this part of the finger. So yeah, it's pretty big. It's not super suitable for me, so I will see if I can do it with it or even without it. So let's test it out. First of all, what I need to say is I'm not super comfortable with thumb draw. I didn't even practice it for like half of a year and I don't really use this style of shooting. But in basics, in let's say foundations, I know how it works. So I hope that I can show you how to do basically the thumb draw. The more professional with this style will correct me what I did wrong and I can improve. Thank you so much. And then we will try the spinning thing. You put your arrow under your knocking point, it holds there. You use the ring or your thumb to go under the arrow and you lock it with your index finger. Then you use the power of your elbow and you release like this. You do this wow L shape with, with the hand like pew. Yeah, it went pretty smooth. I hit a bullseye, which is pretty nice. And now we will try the spinning. If it's even possible with the ring or I would need to go without it. Now I want us to focus on the movement, on the ring, not what is happening with the target or if it really changes the direction of the arrow. I just want to try if it's even technically possible to do it. So knocking point, thumb under, and now I try to twist. Well, it feels weird to do it, but it somehow works. So how much can I twist it? But it feels like badass. Wow, it feels really good. Just to show you how, I, how successful I was. This was the first shot, second, the third, fourth and fifth. So I kind of calibrated my mind for a thumb draw and I can do it now. So let's try for a longer distance. So now the target is good. 12 meters away from me. So I want to try if I'm able to hit it at all. Yeah, pretty nice. Not good, but not bad. I hit the target, that's good. So let's try the spin. All right, it went a little lower than I expected. Maybe some, probably my mistake with the, but it flies so good. You're used to see how your arrows fly normally every day, how it feels. But when you do this, the spinning thing it really gives very special vibe to the arrow and it goes very nice. It's not going anywhere, it's just going straight. I'll try to record it for you so you can see in some kind of slow motion what it does. Now the focus of the camera is somewhere between me and the target. So I'm maybe a little in a haze, but I want to show you the, the most from the line of the flight of the arrow. And the camera is also pretty much behind the target, which is really dangerous and let's hope that I will not make a mistake for four thousand dollars okay I'll try to spin it as much as possible right now and yes the first shot from this series was right in the middle of the target and this one went to the left so it means that probably it did something so I'll try to aim for the right and it's bullseye aha okay Again, I'll try to aim more for the... Well, it really does something, but it feels that it 
does the movement that differentiate the movement at the beginning uh, right after the shot not at the end like we saw in the movie because we saw the scene when he shoots around the tree right behind it and now it's not doing the thing it's doing something at the beginning but not at the end at the end is pretty straight we also know the trick that if you want to shoot in turns you need to put your nog higher palm higher so you should shoot from like this and little angle of the bow and then it really goes into the churn. But in the movie we saw that he knocked normally that everything worked as it should. So is it real? Is it fake? I don't know now. We will put the arrow like palm higher, angle it up and it really goes a little bit in a turn. And like this. Yeah, it really does. Can you see that? I hope yes. Yes, we do this. Wow, yes, I was aiming like for, this, for the rocks here. You can say, see them, rocks here, and it hit the target. So this works, this works. Again, wow, it's pretty effective. It's, and also big fun. Yeah, pretty nice and pretty easy. This works, this works. But in the movie, again, we saw that he knocked as he should and everything was normal how he does that. At first I thought I failed, but when I saw the videos and I slowed it down a little bit, I could see clearly, as you do now, that the arrows really went into turns when I used this thumb twist spin method we saw in the movie War of Arrows. So I can say I succeeded, but I wasn't able to recreate it completely as it was in the movie. So it means that the arrow will turn almost at the end of its flight. For example, James Jean has many videos that he proved it's possible. He changed the position of the fletching on the arrow and then the arrows really went into turns. But in the movie we saw that the fletching was at the end of the arrow as it's usual. Also, we saw that the knocking point and everything was usual as it is for the thumb draw and he just released with the spin. It was the only different thing of all and he was able to do this magic trick shot to shoot behind. My big question is, is it even physically possible to do it or is it something I mentioned earlier many times that Asiatic movies just has this approach that they make their heroes a little bit unnatural, a little bit super great in something. Is it this case too or I just did something wrong. Of course, there are many differences. I have a different bow. I have only 40 pound bow and war bows of Korean warriors were about 130 pounds. Also, I use a different type of arrows. His arrows are maybe heavier, have a heavier broad hat or different fletching or maybe something is just different with the arrow. And also my technique is not perfect for 100%. I am not using thumb draw usually and he mastered it throughout the years. So I couldn't do something I trained for one hour and he practiced it for many many years to master. But let's talk down in the comments if you are able to do it as same as him. If you can twist the string and the arrow and release so at the end of the flight of the arrow it turns to the left. If you can do it let me know down in the comments how you do it, what is the technique, what I did wrong and what I can improve. Or Take your bow, take your arrows and try it yourself and try to figure it out. Honestly, I must say that this recreating archery scenes from movies is big fun and I will definitely continue with that because there are many things and many mysteries I think that are maybe impossible but maybe there's something behind it and I want to explore deeper. So you can definitely look forward to see more recreations from the movies like this. Give this video a like, it will be highly appreciated and I'm looking forward to see you next time.